The following presentation is on differential leveling and doing adjusted elevations on the differential level. In differential leveling, we're going to be using the equations benchmark elevation plus the back sight rod height is going to equal the HI elevation, the instrument height elevation. In addition, we're going to use instrument height elevation minus the foresight rod height reading is equal to the turning point elevation. This slide shows the differential level loop starting at benchmark mill, going to benchmark oak, and coming back to benchmark mill. You have seven different In this slide, we're showing the differential leveling starting from benchmark oak on the return trip back to benchmark mill. The setup five is going to be between benchmark oak and turning point four. Setup six is going to be between turning point four and turning point five. And setup seven is between turning point five all the way back to benchmark mill. This slide represents the field book page setup for both the left hand and the right hand side of the field notes. Notice that you have your turning points and your setups listed on the left hand side in addition to your initial elevation for the benchmark mill. Let's start the differential leveling loop. We're going to start at setup one which is between benchmark mill and turning point one. We're going to take a back sight reading of 1.33 to benchmark mill and a foresight reading of 8.37 to turning point one. Notice that the benchmark elevation benchmark mill is 2053.18. We'll be using this data to input into our field notes. In the field notes, we're going to record the known benchmark elevation at mill at 2053.18. We're going to record the back site elevation 1.33, the back site to mill in the first column. We're going to figure out the height of the instrument by taking the benchmark elevation plus the back site reading. So we're going to take 2053.18, add it to 1.33, and that's going to give us the height of our instrument as 2054.51. From there, we're going to take the foresight reading, 8.37, and subtract it from our instrument height, and we're going to get the elevation of turning point one as 2046.14. Now we move to the instrument to set up point two. We will take a backsight reading of 0 0.22 on turning point one and a foresight rod reading of 7.91 to turning point two. This information is plugged into the field notes as shown. Notice at station two, we are backsighting turning point one and foresighting turning point three. Therefore, when we record our backsight rod reading on turning point one in the backsight column, the backsight reading is 0 0.22 and the foresight rod reading on turning point two, the rod reads 7.91. We will take the previously calculated elevation of turning point one of 2046.14 and add the back sight rod reading of 0.22 to get an instrument height at setup 2. The instrument height at setup 2 is 2046.36. We will then take the instrument height elevation of 2046.36 and subtract the turning point foresight reading of 7.91 from it. This will give us our turning point elevation at 2 as 2038.45. Now we move to setup point 3. We will take a back sight rod reading of 0 0.96 on turning point 2 and a foresight rod reading of 11.72 to turning point 3. This information is plugged into the field book as shown. We record the back sight rod reading on turning point 2 in the back sight column. The backsight rod reading is 0 0.96 and the foresight rod reading on turning point 3 reads 
11.72. We will take the previously calculated elevation of turning point 2 of 2038.45 and add it to the backside reading of 0 0.96 to get the height of the instrument at setup 3. The height of, set, the, height of the instrument at setup 3 is going to be 2039.41. We will then take the instrument height elevation of the 2039.41 and subtract the turning point 3 foresight rod reading of 11.72 to get the elevation at turning point 3. The turning point 3 elevation is equal to 2027.69. Now we move to the instrument to set up point 4. We will take a backsight rod reading of 0 0.46 on turning point 3 and a foresight rod reading of 8.71 to benchmark oak. This information is plugged into the field book as shown. We will record the backsight rod reading on turning point 3 in the backsight column. The backsight rod reading is going to be 0 0.46 and the foresight rod reading on benchmark oak reads 8.71. We will take the previously calculated elevation on turning point 3 of 2027.69 and add the backside ride reading of 0 0.46 to get the height of the instrument. The height of the instrument of setup 4 is going to be 2028.15. We will then take the instrument height reading elevation of 2028.15 and subtract the back, the benchmark oak foresight reading of 8.71 to get an elevation at the benchmark oak. The benchmark oak elevation is 2019.44. Now we're going to move to setup 5. Setup 5, we're going to backsight benchmark oak and foresight turning point 4. The backsight is going to be 11.95 on benchmark oak, and the foresight reading on turning point 4 is 2.69, as shown in the field notes. We recorded the backsight reading at benchmark oak in 11.95 in the backsight column. We're going to take the previously calculated elevation at benchmark oak as 2019.44 and add it to the backsight reading to get the instrument height of 2031.39. We're going to take the foresight reading at turning point 4, which is 2.61, and subtract it from the height of the instrument to get the final elevation at turning point 4, which is going to be 2028. We move our next setup to setup 6, where we're going to be backsiding turning point 4 and foresighting turning point 5. The backside elevation at, or rod reading at turning point 4 is going to be 12.55, and the foresight rod reading at turning point 5 is going to be a rod reading of 0 0.68. We're going to take the backside rod reading of 12.55 at turning point 4 and add it to the previously recorded turning point 4 elevation of 2028.78. Adding the backside and the elevation together, we're going to get the instrument height of 2041.33 at setup 6. We're going to subtract the foresight elevation rod reading at turning point 5 of the 0 0.68 subtracted from the 2041.33 to get the elevation at the turning point 5 of 2040.65. Now we're closing the loop. We're going to go to setup 7 and backsight turning point 5 and foresight our original benchmark mill. Our backsight reading at turning point 5 is going to be 12.77 and our foresight reading at benchmark mill is going to be 0 0.21. You will always end with a foresight reading. The data is shown on the field notes. Now we're going to take the backsight rod reading at turning point 5 and add it to the previously calculated elevation at turning point 5 to get the instrument height. So 2040.65 is the elevation at turning point 5. The backsight elevation at turning point 5 is 12.77. That'll give us an instrument height of 2,053.42. The foresight reading at benchmark mill was 0 0.21. So we're going to subtract that foresight reading from the instrument height of 2,053.42 to get the elevation at, back at benchmark mill. The elevation at benchmark mill is going to be 2,053.21.
Now we need to do the page check. We have finished the differential leveling loop starting at benchmark mill and ending at benchmark mill. Notice that when we started benchmark mill, its elevation was 2053.18, but when we ended at benchmark mill, our elevation was 2053.21. So there's an error in here. So we're going to do a page check to make sure that we did all of our calculations correctly. So we're going to start with calculating the column of the backsite elevations, so or backsite rod readings. All the backsite rod readings total to be 40.24. All the foresight rod readings are going to equal 40.21. So the page check is we're going to start off with a benchmark mill elevation of 2053.18, add our back site column of 40.24, which gives us 2093.40. We're going to subtract all of our foresight rod readings of 40.21 and get a result of 2053.21. That checks with what we actually figured for the benchmark mill at the close of the loop. Now, with that, what we have to do is check to see how much error is from the beginning of our calculations to our end. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check for the loop misclosure. The original data, or the data that we got from the benchmark um, data site, said that benchmark mill was 2053.18. So that is the theoretical elevation that we need to close on. We're going to subtract out the benchmark mill that we actually calculated at the end of our level loop, and that's going to be 2053.21. So we're going to take 2053.18, the original, and we're going to subtract out what we calculated, 2053.21. So we get an error of negative 0.03 feet. Well, that means that we actually are too high from what we originally started. Now we need to check our permissible misclosure. Is this error tolerable, or do we have to go back out in the field and redo this? So the permissible misclosure is going to be 0.2 times the square root of the number of setups. We had seven setups, so we take 0.02 times the square root of 7, and that's going to give us 0 0.05 feet. So we are actually below, our, our loop misclosure is below the permissible misclosure. So no, we do not have to go back out and redo the, the calculations. However, we do have to do an adjustment on all of our elevations. Our eleva elevation adjustment is going to be the loop misclosure, the 0 0.03, divided by the number of setups, which is 7. So we're going to have at least a 0 0.04 elevation change per HI. Now we're going to do all the adjusted elevations. We're going to take the elevations that we calculated and adjust the, the elevations by the adjustment factor. We're going to take each setup and take a portion of the error and add it to the elevation of that setup. So we're going to be adjusting the elevations of turning point 1, 2, 3, benchmark oak, turning point four, five, and back to the last benchmark mill. Now we're going to adjust the elevations for each of the turning points in benchmark oak and benchmark mill. We're going to take the loop misclosure, the negative 0 0.03, and we're going to take a portion of the error for each elevation that we need to change. So the first elevation at turning point one is going to get a seventh of the error, meaning that there are seven setups, so we're going to take 1 over 7 for, ten, for the first um, turning point. We're going to take 2 sevenths of the error for the second turning point, 3 sevenths of the error for the third point, 4 sevenths of the error at oak, 5 sevenths at, at turning point 4, 6 sevenths at turning point 5, and 7 sevenths of the error for benchmark mill. And I'll go through each one of these in the next slides. So note, we're going to take the elevation of 2046.14 and we're going to take the error out. So we've got a negative 0 0.03 times 1 seventh, because it's the first setup error, and add it to the elevation 2046.14. So that's going to give us an adjusted elevation of 2046.14. The seventh of the error of 0 0.03 is so small that you will not see the decimal place change. 
as I stated before, we're now going to adjust each elevation. Now we're working on turning point two. So this is our second setup or our second error that we need to adjust for the elevations. So this is going to be taking two sevenths of the air loop misclosure of negative 0.3. So we're going to take negative 0.3 times two sevenths and we're going to add the elevation. So basically we're subtracting out the air because it's a negative loop misclosure. So that's going to give us an adjusted elevation of 2038.44. Continuing on with adjusting our elevations, we're going to adjust turning point 3. So this is our third of the elevations that we have to change. So we're going to use 3 sevenths times negative 0.03, our loop misclosure, and we're going to add it to the 2027.69 elevation that we calculated. So our adjusted elevation at turning point 3 is going to be 2027.68. For benchmark oak, this is our fourth, per fourth setup. So we're going to take out four-sevenths of the error from our elevation. We're taking away a negative 0 0.07 times four-sevenths and adding it to the elevation at benchmark oak of 2019.44. Again, it is a negative sign because our error is too high and we have to reduce each of the elevations to bring it down for benchmark mill to match the original benchmark mill elevation. Now we're working on turning point four. We're going to adjust the elevation by five-sevenths of the misclosure. So we're going to take the negative point oh three misclosure error multiplied by five-sevenths and add it to the elevation that we calculated for turning point four of 2028.78 which is going to give us an adjusted elevation of 2028.76. Now we're going to take the setup, the misclosure, and this is going to be the sixth setting that we're going to take. So we're going to take six sevenths of the negative 0.03 loop misclosure, and we're going to add it to the elevation that we calculated for turning point 0.5, the 2040.65. So when we do that, it's going to result in an adjusted elevation of 2040.62. This is the last elevation that we have to change. The original benchmark elevation was 2053.18, but when we calculated it on the closure of our level loop, the benchmark mill was calculated at 2053.21. So we're going to take a negative 0.03 times 7 sevenths, because this is a seventh setup, redu reduced from the 2053.21, which is actually going to give us the corrected elevation, the adjusted elevation of 2053.18, which actually matches the real, real original elevation that we started with. And this allows us to have a closed loop. This slide shows the final product of what our field book should look like when we do a differential leveling loop with adjusted elevations.